Today we're going to explore the estimation function within the Atlas platform. If you're interested in designing a population level effect estimation study using the comparative cohort design, uh, you can go to the estimation function on the left hand side of the screen. When you click on estimation, you will be brought to a screen that shows you all existing population level effect estimation designs within the system. You can review and explore existing analysis specification, or you can create a new population level effect estimation by clicking the blue button in the top right hand corner. Here we can see there is an existing population level effect estimation study design entitled the comparative effectiveness of ACE inhibitors versus thiazide diuretics as first line monotherapy for hypertension. So let's click on this link to explore this study. When you jump into an estimation analysis, uh, you will see a series of segments that allow you to fully specify this analysis. Those, those session, sections include comparative cohort settings to define the target and comparator cohorts uh, that represent your exposures, the outcomes of interest, as well as negative control outcomes that can be used uh, for empirical calibration. From there, you can design in effect estimation analysis settings to design one or more ways in which statistical models will be applied to the data for the particular comparison that you've specified. In addition, there are evaluation settings that specify how negative controls will be used to try to estimate systematic error in your analysis and to empirically calibrate your final summary statistics. Let's examine each of these characteristics. First, comparative cohort settings. The estimation tool within Atlas allows you to specify uh, one or more target comparator pairs that can be studied for a series of outcomes. Here, I've defined the target cohort as new users of ACE inhibitors as first line monotherapy for hypertension, and I've selected a comparator cohort of new users of thiazide-like diuretics as first line monotherapy for hypertension. The way that I selected these cohorts was to click this file icon uh, to the right hand side. And by clicking that file icon, I'm brought to the entire list of all cohort definitions that have previously been specified in the Atlas tool. Simply identifying the cohort of interest allows us to click on that cohort definition to select it in this choice box. Once we've defined our target and comparator cohort, we can add one or more outcomes to our analysis by clicking the Add Outcome button. Here too, uh, clicking Add Outcomes shows you the full list of cohort definitions available in your tool, and any cohort can be selected as an outcome. Here we've selected acute myocardial infarction events and angioedema events. In addition to defining the outcomes for which we would like to estimate the population level effect, we also need to choose negative controls as a mechanism for us to estimate systematic error and to empirically calibrate our statistics. Here, we can define a concept set of negative controls uh, to be able to use for this study. By clicking the blue folder button, we can retrieve the list of all concept sets that are already saved in the Atlas platform and select a concept set that has previously been defined to select negative control out outcomes for hypertension drugs. That concept set can then be explored in the concept set tool as previously demonstrated in these video tutorials. Once we've identified the target, comparator, and outcomes of interest, we can also define covariates for which we know we will want to include or exclude in our analysis. In this particular case, because we are doing a study of ACE inhibitors and thiazide diuretics, we would like to exclude concepts that are ACE inhibitors and thiazide diuretics as not potential covariates that we would want to use in any sort of model. To select that, we select the blue button to select an existing concept set that would contain those concepts that we want to exclude. The next section is the effect estimation analysis settings. Uh, here we can see that three analysis settings have already been specified. 
The first one has a description of propensity score stratification on treatment, and it's defined a time at risk and a statistical adjustment strategy and a final outcome model. You can see that multiple analysis settings can be specified, but let's explore the options within each. Here I've selected the analysis settings that was entitled Propensity Score Stratification on Treatment. Here we can define study population characteristics, including when is the study start date and the study end date. We can determine whether or not we should include only the first exposure per subject in the cohort and how we should handle patients who are in both the target and comparator cohort, whether to keep them all or to keep the first of those two cohorts that exist or to remove patients who belong to both cohorts. We have an option to decide whether to restrict our analysis to the period when both exposures are observed. This is particularly relevant when studying a newly marketed medicine versus an established uh, treatment. We get to specify the minimum required continuous observation time prior to the index date for which a patient should be included. Here we can require a common one year look back period for all patients. We can determine whether or not we want to sample the population and for purposes of our analysis. And we can also look to see whether or not we want to remove patients who have had the outcome prior to the risk start. In this particular case, if we are interested in looking to the time to first event, then we would potentially want to remove patients who have had previous, previously experienced an outcome because that means they are no longer at risk for a first occurrence. Here we've said we will remove those patients, in which case we're given the option to determine how far back do we look in someone's medical history to identify their prior outcomes. Finally, if a subject is in multiple cohorts, we need to decide how time at risk should be censored. Once we've defined our study population characteristics, we can move on to our covariate settings. As a default, the estimation tool provides a default set of covariates that we would recommend for analyses. If you click to view details, you can see the specific choices that have been made, and you can edit them accordingly. This tabular display shows you all of the covariates that can be selected. Here we have selected demographic covariates, including gender, age group, index year, and index month. We've also defined baseline covariates for each and every condition concept and drug concept in two different time windows, a long-term time window representing 365 days prior to exposure, and a short-term time window using the preceding 30 days. We've additionally created baseline covariates for procedures, measurements, observations, and devices. We additionally have the ability to select index score covariates to use. For example, here we have selected to include the CHADS2 VASC uh, stroke prediction score, the diabetes complications severity index, DC, DCSI, and the Charlson comorbidity index. Each of these checkboxes represents an option to create a series of baseline covariates that could then be used in your statistical modeling, whether it be for a propensity score model to predict treatment assignment or for an outcome model uh, to adjust for these potential confounders. Once covariates are selected, they can be further refined to either include or exclude specific variables in specific models. The next set, set of options to dis define is the time at risk. Here, time at risk is a window of time for which we will be looking for an outcome, and it's specified relative to the target and comparator cohort start or end dates. Here, we've specified that time at risk starts one day following the cohort start date uh, and ends at the end of the cohort time. In other words, we are looking for events that occurred sometime following the initiation of treatment up to and until the point that a patient was no longer continuously exposed to the drug. On the basis of this, the minimum time at risk is one day. We have the option to use propensity score as a strategy for confounding adjustment. A propensity score is a predicted probability of treatment assignment uh, and can be used through a series of strategies uh, for adjustment. One option to make is whether or not to estimate a propensity score and to trim patients on the basis of extreme values. 
and there are options for how to trim the propensity score on the basis of that. Once a propensity score is estimated, it can be used for either matching, stratification, or inverse probability treatment weighting. Here, stratification has been selected. Once the strategy for using the propensity score is selected, there's a series of additional questions that are asked. In the case of propensity score stratification, the question of how many strata would like to be included is asked. Here, we are using 10 propensity score strata. Uh, there is a question of uh, which of the subjects should be used to define the strata bounds, how many patients are going to be sampled in order to estimate the propensity score, and whether or not we want to perform additional diagnostic tests to evaluate collinearity within the propensity score model. There are additional covariate settings for which typically default values are, are appropriate, but they can be explored by looking uh, by clicking on these uh, blue icons to look at the different control settings and prior distributions used for our lasso logistic regression. Finally, we have the outcome model settings. Uh, this is to determine the specific outcome model that's going to be run. Options available include a logistic regression to study the odds uh, of an outcome occurrence, a Poisson regression to study the rate of events, and a Cox proportional hazards model to be able to study the hazards of time to onset of an event. Here we've selected a Cox proportional hazard model, uh, in which case there's a decision about whether this will be a conditional uh, model or not, whether and whether or not we are going to be additionally using the propensity score as a, uh, a weighting instrument. The analysis settings specified here include the ability to look at a non-treatment analysis, intent to treat, propensity score stratification, or matching. One study design can include multiple different analysis variants to explore the effect. Finally, the evaluation settings provide you details about how to specify your negative controls such that you can estimate systematic error. And here we've specified that our negative control outcomes are first occurrences of conditions that are specified. Once you have specified your analysis, you can go over to the Utilities tab. And in the Utilities tab, you will get a review of all of the analysis settings that you have specifically specified. Seen here, we've now specified six particular analyses on the basis of the fact that we had one target comparator uh, pair, two different outcomes, and three different analysis settings. Once you've reviewed and are comfortable with your study specification, you can then create a and download a study package by spe specifying a name and clicking download. This download is, is producing an R package that's in a zip file that can then immediately be uploaded into R Studio. You would specify your database settings and be able to execute this study against any of your internal databases. Additionally, this design setting can be fully specified as a JSON expression, which can be shared with any organization who has an Atlas, insta Atlas instantiation, and they can import these so that you can design a study, execute it yourself, and also share with the rest of the community so that we can participate in network research. So that's your overview of the estimation function within the Atlas platform. If you are interested in learning more about other functionality within Atlas or learning more about how to join the journey of the Odyssey community, uh, please check out odyssey.org.